Welcome to Hapa e Kaiwa Podcast with Jun Senesak, episode 273. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Jun here with Hapa e Kaiwa. Today's guest is Tomohiro Seo. Tomo is originally from Hiroshima and moved to the United States over 20 years ago. In the US, he was working for a Japanese company for almost 10 years when he decided to quit his job to pursue his dreams. Tomo's dream was a simple one. He wanted to do something to help people from all over the world, not just the Japanese community. Tomo thought the best way to do that was to serve Japanese food to the world because he believed that food had the power to break down the language and cultural barriers. However, He was faced with harsh reality. He didn't have money to start a restaurant, nor did he have any experience as a chef to make authentic Japanese food. So, what did he do? He bought a truck, got into the food trucking business, and served Japanese style curry. Today's interview is an inspiring story of Tomo that teaches you the power of hard work, dedication, and believing in yourself. トモさんはもともと広島出身で20年以上前にアメリカへ引っ越してきました。トモさんは約10年間アメリカにある日系企業で働いていましたが自分の夢を追うため会社を辞めました。トモさんの夢は日系社会だけでなく世界中の人々に貢献できる何かがしたいというシンプルなものでした。食べ物には文化や言語の壁を越える力があると信じていたトモさんは日本食を世界中の人々に提供したいと考えました。しかし、レストランを始めるためのお金はなく、またシェフとして本格的な日本食を作った経験もないという厳しい現実に直面しました。そこで彼は一体どうしたのでしょうか彼はトラックを買ってフードトラックビジネスに飛び込み、和風カレーを提供しました。今日のインタビューは、自分を信じて一生懸命頑張って働くことについて、トモさんが語ってくれる刺激的な対談です。I hope you guys enjoy this conversation. With Tomohiro Sale. Hey, Sale, what's going on? How are、yeah, you doing today?、Here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show.、No、I'm、uh, excited to talk to you today. And,、yeah, me、uh, too. you know, we'll talk about this a little bit more later on, but we actually just shot a YouTube video of your food <clears throat> truck. Yeah, thank right? You for coming. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I actually never seen the inside of a food truck.、Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, <clears throat> I've bought things from food trucks before,、mm. but I've never seen what it's like in the inside.、Right. Yeah. So it was actually a very cool experience to be <laughs> able to go inside your truck,、mm. see what it's like, the whole、right. operation side yeah, all, of it. All、running. the people come into the inside, they say, oh, this is bigger than outside looking. What's、yeah. coming to the inside is、yeah. much bigger than. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Because、uh, from the outside, it doesn't look like it's very big.、Yeah. <laughs> But once you get inside. Yeah, say, no, how come there are three or a couple of people walking inside in a small, small、uh, space? Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways,、um, uh, I'll let you guys know more. But、uh, we actually shot a YouTube video.、Uh, it's on Hapa E Kaiwa's YouTube channel.、Um, so, after this podcast,、I've, after you listen to this podcast, go and check out the YouTube channel and see what it's like,、uh, what his food truck is like. So, anyway,、um, you know, this is not the YouTube channel. We're on the podcast today.、Okay. <laughs> and I want to hear a little bit more about you, your business, and what your life has been like here in the United、mm. States. So,、um, make me you... nervous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> so, Seo san,、um, can you briefly just tell me about yourself?、Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Tomo.、Mm-hmm. Call me, everyone calls me Tomo. I was born in Tokyo. And when I was seven years old, moving to the Hiroshima, that's the place I raised up. I came here in the United States、uh, when I was、uh, 24 years ago.、Oh. Uh, no, 24 years old.、Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Then I started learning English. Then now, wow, it's past 20 years so far. Yeah, yeah. so it's been over 20 <laughs> years since. <laughs> that's, <laughs> long, so,、yeah. <laughs> that's a long time. Yeah, yeah. So you're from Hiroshima. Uh, yes. Yeah. My parents、uh, live in Hiroshima. Very nice. Yeah, I've been to Hiroshima a couple times and、uh, I have to ask you this question.、Yeah. Are you a Carps fan? That's the most question people. <laughs> 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 But when I ask some, some, somebody ask me that, yes. Yes. But my father 
is a Giants fan. Oh, he's a Giants fan. And my fan. brother is a Cubs fan. Uh-huh. So I was being watching when I was a little kid. Well, the, the, my, parent, my father and brother is conflicting to each other when the Giants is Cup doing a game. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm pretty much, you know, not really the, the side. You know? Okay. I, yeah, I'm so, very flat. I see, I see. <clears throat> so you're kind of, you have like a neutral stance. Neutral stance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, whether it's the Giants or the Carps. So if you're in Hiroshima, you're a Carps fan. Yes. If you go to Tokyo, you're a Giants yeah, yeah, fan. Yeah. <laughs> Where are my clothes? <laughs> um, very cool, yeah. Because uh, every time I go to Hiroshima, I notice that people in Hiroshima mm-hmm. are die-hard Carps fan. Yeah, the entire is. city is go red. red. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you get out the station, it's just a sea of red. red. And it's amazing every time I go yeah. there. So no, ma- no matter what, when you go to the Hiroshima Cup Stadium, you have to pretend to be the Cup fan. You have to. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Not a Giants fan. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Whatever you wear, the cap, the uh-huh. red stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> I bought, a, I bought a hat, by the way, oh, the yeah? Hiroshima Carps <laughs> Yeah, it says Kapu in Katakana. Kapu. Oh, Kapu in Katakana? Ah, so when I wear it, cool. people know that I'm a Gaikokujin because oh, I think Japanese see. people don't wear Kapu that uh, says in Katakana. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the sale in J- Japan? In Japan, yeah, I found oh, yeah. it in Japan. Ah. It was actually uh, uh, discounted, it was uh, 50% off. And I think wow. the reason it was 50% nobody off is because it. nobody <laughs> wants it. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted it. So yeah, it's I think, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're not here to talk about the Hiroshima Carp, so we're here to talk about you today. <laughs> yeah. um, so, Seoa, uh, can you just tell the listeners what you do, mm. what your day-to-day tasks are like? Mm. Uh, since I'm running the food truck business, it's maybe called in Japan is a, uh, the lunch co- lunch, lunch call, whatever. It's now, lately, if people think, start calling it food truck. Uh-huh. But, you know, maybe the listener, everyone knows the food truck is a mobile the kitchen car business. Uh-huh. It's been nine years, ten years around that. And uh, so the way I do the business every day, mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, in the morning, I'm going to the shopping first and grocery store and buying stuff and moving to the commissary. If commissary is the one... A uh, food truck has to park. Oh, okay. Is uh, officially the uh, permitted by the health department. Mm-hmm. You have to park the food truck there because the the health de- department rule it is right. Mm-hmm. And bringing the stuff into the truck, then meet my workers, then moving to the spot to work. I have most likely have a spot two different spots. It is Santa Monica. And uh, LA downtown. Mm. So most uh, basically Monday, Wednesday, Friday go to downtown LA, and Tuesday and Thursday go to the Santa Monica. And the lunch hour was at eleven thirty to around uh, two o'clock. <laughs> then back to uh, after close the door, my truck, and driving in a traffic crazy <laughs> <laughs> down to the commissary again. Yeah. Then after that, the washing, the, the cleaning up the inside of the truck. Uh huh. Then mostly get done for the, the for my work. Ah, I see. So how long does the preparation in the morning usually in the morning, take? Uh, I will say like uh, in an hour. One hour. Uh, in, in one hour. Uh huh. Yeah, most because most likely the main main stuff we selling is a curry, right? Right. And the curry is already pre-made. Mm-hmm. So all I need to do is uh, bring the, to the location and warming up. Mm-hmm. And while warming, warming up, the, my worker is cutting the vegetable or grill the teriyaki chicken. Yeah, that's pretty much, doesn't take a long time to open it. Right, right. <clears throat> and um, by the way, how many co-workers, or, I mean not co-workers, but how many workers do you have working uh, for you? It depends the uh, basically lunch. It's only one. What? So I'm the cashier, mm-hmm. and he's the kitchen. Got you. Only two people work inside. Too many people cannot fit in the small truck. <laughs> <laughs> and it depends how big the event, the super, super big event, we're going to hire the extra workers. Uh-huh. But maybe, most likely, me and the one more person is enough. Right, right. <clears throat> and uh, like you said, you know, uh, with your food, uh, food truck business, uh, there are a lot of different types of people who sell different types of food. Mm-hmm, um, you decided to go with curry. Okay. Um, but, you know, we'll talk about that later on why you decided mm. to... Um, 
use curry as mm -hmm. your food trucking business.、Um, but before、uh, you know, we talk about that,、um, I want to talk about your past a little、okay. bit. Yeah, <laughs> when、uh, before you moved to the United States.、Uh -huh. um, so you said you've been here in the United States for over 20 years 20 now. Years, yes. Did you always want to live in the United States? Oh, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs>、uh -huh. the, honestly, yeah. when I was,、uh, I would say like、uh, elementary school, never dreamed it.、Uh -huh. Even my the older brother, s the one time he graduated, graduated、uh, how do you say, after graduate the college,、mm -hmm. uh, university, they go to the travel, right? Yeah, I'll study abroad. Study abroad, I think. My older brother studied abroad to the Grand Canyon,、uh -huh. and I saw the picture when I was in、uh, elementary school. And I said, Oh, it's beautiful, but I'm thinking I've never had a chance to go there. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I even thought that I'd never have a chance to the, ride an airplane. <laughs> That's my limited my, the image. Right. So I never imagined that, like, a、uh, After 10 years, 15 years later,、uh -huh. I started living in the United States. I never dreamed that when I was a little kid. Wow. So, <clears> when <throat> you were a kid, you thought that、mm. you were basically going to stay in Hiroshima? Maybe you stay in the、yeah, west side of Japan.、Uh -huh. Even not Tokyo, maybe. Not even It, Tokyo. Not even Osaka. Yeah. Maybe stay in the <laughs> local, super local. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, what happened? I mean, I guess when you were a kid, I, I mean, when you're a kid, you don't really know, but how did this mindset change、mm. to all of a sudden you becoming interested in、yeah. <clears throat> living abroad? I think the one of the reasons is my friends.、Mm -hmm. the <clears throat> when I work in the part time job at the place, the My friend, he is a little bit older than my, my, my age, <clears throat> but he, he loves to travel around. So, always he s h o w me the picture. He g o to the United States or any the Asia, or whatever, Europe. And I, that's make me inspire, inspiring too, you know. <clears throat>、mm -hmm. Even、oh, he s my close friend, but he, nothing different with me. Only age is different, right? He's right. Not, not like a super rich person, but he's. He can go to the, go to the abroad every, everywhere he wanted.、Uh -huh. So maybe I have a chance to go there. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm actually interested. Do you think the reason why you thought you couldn't go abroad、mm. was because of financial reasons? Do you think like, you needed a lot of money in order for you to. Maybe one of the reasons, yes. One of the reasons、yeah. why. <clears throat> And when you saw your friend who was basically the same as you, right? He wasn't like really rich, <laughs>、yeah. but when you saw somebody like him being able to travel the world、right. without having a lot of money,、mm -hmm. it made you realize that,、yeah. oh, maybe this is something I can、yeah. do too. Right. Yeah. Because before that, I thought、uh, going to abroad is we have to book the airplane, book the, the hotel. Join the tour,、uh -huh. that costs a lot. Yeah, but the way he do, does is only buy the ticket,、mm -hmm. and after get the spot,、uh, he <clears throat> g o to where, wherever he wanted, wherever he w a n t to stay. You know, no plan,、mm -hmm. only get the ticket, right? Right, so that costs you can save little, yeah, yeah. You're right. <clears throat> And that's、uh, what it's like to travel when you're young, right?、Mm -hmm. You're traveling on a budget, you don't、yeah. have that much money. That's backpacking. Backpacking, yeah, 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 <laughs> that's, exactly. That's the way, exactly, that's the way it is.、Uh -huh. uh, into the, my second going to abroad, my first thing in Jamaica, right? Jamaica? Yeah, that was that, the first that was my, place. My debut, my debut. Hold on. <laughs> of all <laughs> places, <laughs> why did、uh, you choose Jamaica? <laughs> the, the, the first one, Jam, going to Jamaica with my the, you, the friend. Uh, when I was at、uh, university,、uh -huh. and he loves the reggae.、Mm. Oh,、uh, okay. Bob Marley. Right. And he wanted to go to the Jamaica, but he's kind of the, afraid to go in along.、Mm -hmm. So he asked me, what, you, don't want, you want to go to it together? And I said, I didn't even know what the Bob Marley does, but <laughs> okay, let's, go, let's go together.、Uh -huh. And going to the Jamaica, like,、uh, I think five, six days. That's、uh, my the first trip. And that's, those days inspired me that maybe I could. I, the, the travel around is,、uh, I like it.、Mm -hmm. So I could buy myself. Then, second journey is already by the big backpack、mm -hmm. and going to the Jamaica. And、uh, <clears throat> my goal is the,、uh, what's it called? The, 
we can see the place that knows on like the oh uh, uh, to um what is it Alaska yeah Alaska no. uh-huh. it's called the place is called the Fairbanks uh huh. But going to the Fairbanks to see the aurora is a northern light. It's called yeah, northern lights. Northern lights. Right. Yes, that is my goal to go to Alaska, and that's my myself and go to the hitchhiking. Uh huh. <laughs> Even though I don't sp- I don't speak English zero. Uh huh. The yeah. Hold on. So did you actually make that dream a reality? Did you actually hitchhike and go to Alaska and see the northern lights? Did <laughs> yeah. you make that happen? Yeah. That's. You know what? The at that back in like uh, twenty five years ago, something uh-huh. like that. In Japanese TV show, is uh, it's called Denpa Shonen. Denpa Shonen. Denpa Shonen is uh, the the guy was hitchhiking all over the places. Yeah. And with backpacking, it uh, that makes a big boom in Japan, uh-huh. especially for the young kids. Yeah. And he can do. Maybe I can do it. Uh huh. <laughs> so maybe I was uh, too much pure. <laughs> <laughs> And the copy it. Maybe uh-huh. he can do. It. I can do it. And buy the backpacking and go to the Alaska. <clears throat> so you did backpack and you hitched hike to Alaska. Yeah. Really. Where yeah. Where did you start and where did you end up hitchhiking? Uh, okay. Let's say the from uh, from Japan. Maybe going to the Korea first and uh-huh. transit to the uh, Anchorage. Uh huh. Is the capital? I think. They, I think they. Uh, from the Anchorage to Fairbanks, I think a couple hours. I still remember that the Korean guy uh, picked me up. Picked you up? Yeah. Yeah. And the, he drove up to the Fairbanks. Uh, it's, I think, a couple hours. A couple hours. Yeah. <clears throat> so was it pretty smooth? Were you able to catch rides? Or did you have difficulties getting to your destination? No, not at all. No, not at all. <laughs> so people were very nice. Yeah, huh? they, were, yeah. they picked you up. Yeah. And I'm assuming you went to go see the Northern Lights. So this is during the winter time when it's really it cold, was, uh, right? Actually, it was uh, September, I oh, guess. Oh, September. Yeah. Okay. But Fairbanks is a place when you uh, see the Northern Lights, the over 20... 250 days in a year. So if you want, you spend like a couple of days up, up there, probably you can see it. You can see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I see. Wow. So that that is pretty crazy. So you had like <laughs> this, you saw this guy on TV, yeah. you were inspired, yeah. you said, I'm going to do it, yeah. and yeah. you actually Writing made the it happen. Writing in the note, uh-huh. holding <laughs> on the, by the street. Yeah. And hitchhiking. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy, right? That is crazy. Maybe the I, things you do when you're young, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe I cannot do it now. <laughs> Especially California is is prohibited, right? Maybe. Um actually you might be right because I don't see too many hitchhikers right. out here. You're correct. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you cannot do it here. Yeah. And and it, <laughs> it is a little dangerous out here. You do have to be <laughs> careful where you're hitchhiking. Um but you know that uh, story about yours, uh, you know, you hitchhike. I think uh, as a young guy and, you know, a young uh, woman too. Um, hitchhiking is something that you, um, I don't know, it feels very adventurous, right? Mm-hmm, something that you want to try out <laughs> yeah. when you're young. So uh, when I was living in Japan, I think I was 24 or 25 years old. I actually hitchhiked in Japan too. Oh, you are? Yeah. From uh, Kanazawa to Osaka. Okay. And then we also, once we arrived to Osaka, we spent a couple days in Osaka. And then from Osaka to Kanazawa, my friend and I Mm. hitchhiked back. But I feel like uh, it's such a fun, (laughs) memorable experience, right? right? And the people that you meet along the way, you just, they're typically really good people. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, true. And what I noticed too is that uh, people who pick you up Mm -hmm. are usually people who have hitchhiked in the past. Oh, maybe that's true. Yeah. <clears throat> maybe someday later, I'm the chance to have pick up somebody. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And because I thought Japanese people wouldn't pick us up. We're, um, you know, it was me and another uh, Canadian friend. We're okay. both really big. Oh, okay. I'm sure like picking us up must have been really scary, right? right? right we have like yeah. two guys that are like 185 oh, centimeters. No. <laughs> One guy's like very gaikokujin looking, right? right? Um, but every time I got in the car and started talking to these Japanese people, they had the same story as you. Ah. They're like, yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, when I was young, yeah. I used to hitchhike. Right. I hitched hike in, uh, what is it, Southeast Asia and a lot of different mm. places. So it was right. their way That's to true. give back to the younger yeah. people. Once people get helped by somebody, then after that, I want to, they want to 
help somebody else, right? Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is、uh, pretty cool. So, that was your beginning into <laughs> your life、yeah. abroad, huh? So,、um, with all these experiences and inspirations that you got from Japan, what basically brought you to the United States? How did you end up here in、mm. the United States?、Uh, in that time, when I was 24 years ago,、uh, 24 years old, <clears throat> my goal is to just like、uh, study English.、Mm-hmm. So, I signed up the eight months. <clears throat> The ESL? ESL. ESL.、Mm-hmm. I have four months in the San Diego, another four months in New York.、Mm-hmm. And that's my goal. And to, to study English, I, I, I was the, thinking that the United States is the best place. <clears throat> so at that time, I was thinking to after eight months past the, after ESL classes, I returned to Japan. Yeah. So that's my start. Mm hmm. So, you gave yourself eight months, eight months. here in the、mm-hmm. United States to study English. To study, that's it. And your plan was to go back to Japan. Japan、yes. Yeah. And h- how did that plan go? Well, <clears throat> after eight months, my English was not enough. Even now, not, not enough. <laughs> <laughs> But <clears throat> I thought maybe I getting likes. To live in here.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, at the same time, the eight month English career is not works enough to、uh, to work back to Japan.、Mm-hmm. When I do i n g the job hunting、mm-hmm. and the interview, I say, I study English eight months in the United States. But people say, so what? <laughs>、right? So what?、Uh-huh. <laughs> There are a lot of people working the, 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 going there abroad for a couple of years. Yeah. Having the MBA, whatever,、mm-hmm. you have <clears throat> eight months is nothing.、Mm-hmm. So I thought I have to do something more, something extra, English plus something else. Right. That's made me <clears throat> more, you know, <clears throat> getting j o b Right. So what, what did you decide to do after your eight months? Did you go back to Japan or did you stay、uh, here? Eight months, I transferred to the college, it's、oh. Orange Coast College,、uh-huh. and starting the major. The film and video. Human video? Oh, film. Oh, film. film. Got you. Yeah,、uh-huh. film and video. That's my、uh, next step. Uh huh. <clears throat> and I graduated after a year and a half. Then practic- practical training? Right. Yeah, practical training visa and worked at the local publishing company.、Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's my start, my career. In the United States. Ah, <clears throat> very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, initially, your plan was to come here, study English, go back to Japan,、mm. and find a company that、right. would be where you will be able to use your English and Japanese.、Mm-hmm. But you soon realized that studying here for eight months is、oh, no. not enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which led you to going to、uh, a community college here,、mm-hmm. learning filming and photography.、Mm-hmm. And, uh, One thing led to another. You ended up working for a company here in、mm. Los Angeles. Right. Yeah.、Mm. Wow. Very interesting.、Um, so, when you lived here,、mm. whether it was your first year or whether it was your first couple years living here,、mm. what w a s some of the good things that you noticed about living here in the United States or in Los Angeles? And what were some of the bad things that you kind of picked up living、mm. over here? Compared to Japan, I guess.、Mm, the most reason why I keep staying here is nothing different when I start in Japan,、uh, starting here the first day and 20 years, late, years later now, it's no different. That's a blue sky.、Mm-hmm. Uh, LA's blue sky. Yeah. Always. I love it. And the blue sky makes people you know, relaxing, m a k e people nice and happy. Right. <clears throat> maybe that's the reason why I stay here.、Mm. Not, maybe not in New York, not in. Some other states,、right. LA.、Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the weather is beautiful here, weather though. Is beautiful. It is,、yes. it really <clears throat> is. And、uh, when you live here for a really long time,、mm. like for myself, I grew up in Los Angeles, you sometimes take the weather for granted, right? You forget how beautiful <laughs>、right. it is in Los yeah, Angeles because、true. it's beautiful every single day. Yeah, it like, literally、yeah. doesn't rain, and you never see a cloud in the sky.、Mm. 
Um, and when it does rain, people talk about the rain. Right? It's like, oh my God, it's raining yeah. today, right? That's how uh, beautiful it is. Oh, that's a good question. Because uh -huh. when I'm talking to the American friends, they say, <coughs> is when I started in Japan back days, uh, studying here back days, the, when raining, American people are surprising. Yeah. Oh, this is raining coming in. So, so me for me, Japanese, what is the special? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in Japan, like there is a, there are four seasons. Exactly. Right? <clears throat> exactly. And rainy season, wind, uh, the snowing season, mm -hmm. summertime, the fall, all season looks different. And rainy, nothing special. Yeah. The so American guys, the <clears throat> rain is coming now. So. I know, right? They like panic, right? <laughs> it's like, oh my God, it's going to rain tomorrow. Yeah, right. yeah. And in Los Angeles, you can tell that people are not used to the rain just by driving, right? Oh, when no. you're on the freeway <laughs> on a rainy day, yeah. people are terrible at so, driving. It's so dangerous, right? They don't know how to yeah. drive in the rain, right? Yeah. So, um, yes, I, I totally agree with the weather. Um, you know, it's something that I grew up with, but I always have to remind myself that we have it really good here <laughs> in Los Angeles. Is there anything bad or anything mm. that you notice here living? Customer service? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe the, probably the listening, mm -hmm. this podcast. Yeah. Most likely they are living in Japan, right? Yes, okay. most of them do, so yeah. Still they don't know it. Uh -huh. But when, <laughs> when it comes to the United States, maybe they recognize how much <laughs> How would you describe the customer service in the United States? Uh, we'll say, I sometimes feel like Japanese customer service is too much kind. Uh -huh. That's what makes me the feeling like the American one is pretty bad. But basically for the American people, mm -hmm. it's a basic, right. maybe nothing special we're feeling. Uh -huh. But I think uh, I know what you're talking about in terms of in Japan being like, maybe too polite too at polite. times, right? Yeah. I mean, it's very uh, systematic. They yeah. follow a certain way of... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, customer service where it doesn't matter if you go to a konbini in Tokyo or a konbini in Hiroshima mm -hmm. the way they talk to you and the way they act are pretty much the same right, right? they follow a certain set of Manually. rules like yeah. a very manualized in the United States um, of course you know certain restaurants high-end restaurants do have a um, what is it standards that they have to mm -hmm. meet but generally speaking, when you're talking about fast food or supermarkets, you know, the customer service will vary depending on the, the person, person, right? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's super casual. Sometimes they're on their phone. Mm. Sometimes they're talking with their coworkers. Right. When you're standing, you're like, hello, you know, yeah. can you give me some service yeah. here, please? Yeah. yeah. And uh, no matter what, the million time I say hello, but people are... Doing the Facebook one yeah. <laughs> inside there. It's like, I'm a customer yeah, here, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but you've been living here for 20 years now. And mm -hmm. also, you're in the customer business, too. Yeah. I actually want to ask you this maybe later on. But have you gotten used to the customer service here now in the United States? And I know that you also go back to Japan a couple of times a year. Mm -hmm. Um, when you go back to Japan and get the customer service in Japan, how do you feel now? Do you think that it's too much? Or like every time you go back to Japan, you're like, ah, oh, th this is customer service. Mm -hmm. Like, well, what is your feeling now, now that uh, you've been living here? Yeah, that's a good question. Dude. When I back to Japan, I still feel like too much polite, uh -huh. but it does never make me, you know, uncomfortable, right? Good point. <clears throat> But I sometimes feel sorry for the workers that are there. Uh -huh. They are working that too much work hard without tips. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I leave a tip for uh -huh. them. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for you know good customer services. Do they take it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, the good. first day, uh, uh -huh. you don't have to really. Right. Say, but I say, no, no problem. You uh -huh. take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, <clears throat> yeah. Still, I like the customer service in Japan. But yeah. I don't say... The customer service in United States better be like that way, right? Because right. different country, mm -hmm. different culture, right? So they don't, they don't really each time each copy each time, right? The, each country country has a each way. So I do respect the American way. I do respect the Japanese way as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and I totally agree with you on that point. 
So you talked about the good things, the bad things. How about some of the things that you struggled in the United States?、Mm. What were some of the obstacles you faced your first couple years here? The, the of course, English. Because、mm-hmm. when I took ESL class, there are seven different levels, right? Starting one to seven.、Mm-hmm. And the first day, we have the、uh, test. It was the re- reading test, writing test. Some kind of stuff. Most likely, Japanese are good at grammar.、Mm-hmm. So, a lot of my. The, at that time, there was now my friend, but a, a lot of Japanese students starting at like, like level four or five. Okay. But me, I was the only one starting from starting level two. Number two. <laughs> 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 so, at that time, I still remember that days. The, The English study, the first day, the teacher said to the student in level two to do the homework, right?、Mm-hmm. The teacher asked them to the, do the homework reading, like a, the textbook. Before you come to the tomorrow, you have to read the, the page one to 15. Read a book、uh, at home and come back tomorrow. But At that time, I couldn't understand what he's saying.、Mm. Everything was in English, right? I, I didn't even understand what he asked me. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, of course, I do. I came to the school without nothing. Right, right. Then, what's happening was、uh, my teacher asked me, Why, Tomo? Why you didn't read the textbook before you, before you come? I told you to do the homework. But still, I don't understand why he's mad at me.、Mm-hmm. I understand his, his face.、Yeah. He's mad. <laughs> But you don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm just feeling like something I did wrong. Right. But I didn't know what's wrong with it. Yeah. That's my start. But the good, re- the good stuff is all the students starting, the, the students level two, or same level,、mm-hmm. and their communication. Is the too much broken English, but you know, at least they are trying to communicate each other, even the broken English, right? And there's no Japanese out there、mm. because all the Japanese are level higher. <laughs> <laughs> I am the only one, so only one the, the skill the, I mean, the way to communicate with them is English,、so、right? I was struggling to、uh-huh. communicate with them, but maybe at that, the situation m a k e me improve my English, right?、Mm. Yeah, yeah.、Mm. And it's difficult, right? Because when you're in a situation where you don't even understand the instructions、mm. from the teacher,、right. the teacher tells you to read 15 pages, but you don't even know what、no. the teacher is telling you what to do.、Right. So you come in the next day and you have no idea why、mm. the teacher is mad at you,、yeah. right? Yeah. But I was not the only one. Uh, uh, the other the students too. <laughs>、yeah. So maybe the teacher had to read. The teacher had to struggle. Yeah, I me, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it seems like you were in a very good situation、mm. with good classmates who were not afraid to just speak up,、uh, and that probably helped、mm. you become a better speaker, right? right? <clears throat> On that note,、um, how did you learn to become a good speaker? Was it in the classroom? Was it with friends? Did you watch a lot of movies? What, what did you do specifically to.、Uh, for me personally, friends. Friends? Yeah. The. I, the, I was playing soccer,、mm-hmm. the football here.、Mm. The, so it's not hard to make my friends through the sport, doing sports. So that makes me help s a lot to making friends. And it, it, international students, each other, people are、uh, speaking broken English. So that days make me realize that I don't really have to do the perfect English. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The goal to learning English is to communicate it to each other. Right. It's not necessary to have the perfect English.、Mm-hmm. So, the, the, yeah, friends, movie, some people say that mo- watching the movie it helps a lot. Yeah. But for me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because even me,、uh-huh. now, I don't go to the movie theater.、Mm-hmm. And.、Uh, Even though I go to the movie theater, probably I understand the English maybe 50% or less. Right. But there's no worry about it because in the real life, you don't have chance to 
keep listening two hours somebody talking. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> keep listening two hours. Mm -hmm. There's no, no, no situation like that. Right. So, and also, if somebody say the words I don't understand, I can ask them to. Right. Can you say it again? But the movie is non stop. Yeah, you, you can't stop the <laughs> right? movie. You can't say it to the yeah. actor, huh? Yeah. What did you say just yeah. now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a good point, though, because right. in a movie setting, you are basically just listening just the listening. entire yeah. time, right. right? And also, that that's the way to learn English you can do in Japan. Mm -hmm. But I was in the United States. Good point. You don't have to really do the same way to learn mm -hmm. English in Japan people. Right. There is American, a lot of American people, a lot of international people here. Uh -huh. So just start talking to them. Yeah. yeah, like why watch a movie when there are a lot of American people <laughs> here, right? <laughs> real person yeah, in front of person. me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, you know, I think you bring up a good point in terms of like watching movies and talking to a real person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with movies, you are just sitting there for two hours. And if you don't understand mm -hmm. it, the movie yeah. keeps on going, <laughs> right? But in a real conversation, if you don't understand what they're saying, mm -hmm. you can stop them. Like, right. I'm sorry, I didn't, you know, hear what you mm -hmm. said. Can not catch what you said? Can you say that one more right. time? And then from there, you learn a little right. bit. So I think that's a great way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also the good point to talking to people, when the other people are starting to understand, I am the, I'm not the person to the fluent English person. Right. So what's happening was they picking up easy words to talk to me. Mm. Right. <clears throat> that is not a movie or listening radio doesn't help. So when 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 I conversation with somebody else, I do the. The face like that to understand it. Yeah. Then the people are starting choosing the the more <clears throat> the comfortable word they're right. picking up and pe speaking slowly like that. Uh -huh. They are not robots. Right. They are the real person. So that make me to help me to the the study English more fun. Right. Fun. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> and that is what communication is all yeah. about, yeah. right? Is you when you're speaking to one another, you have to make sure that they are understanding what mm. you are saying and right. you are understanding what they are saying. Yeah. And when you're talking to a real person, if they notice, oh, maybe this person isn't understanding what I'm mm. saying, they're gonna adjust the way right. they speak. They might slow down, yeah. they might use easier words. Yeah. Even even my worker maybe picking up easy words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah maybe, I think that even my worker talking to American customers, uh -huh. and uh, maybe I don't, I understand not the perfect. Yeah. Because they are using too much slang. Yeah. But when, when I talking to my worker, when I talking to my customer, the face to face one on one, they are picking up easy words. Right. So not nothing. The really hard time to understand. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. So it sounds like for you, you really learned English from communicating with people. Mm. You made an effort, you made it a point to go out right. and meet with people and talk to mm. them. Very cool. Um, let's go to the next here. Um, so now I want to talk a little, about, little bit about your food trucking business. So how did you get into your food trucking business? Mm. Because you said that you went to the community college for two years you mm. graduated with a film and photography degree and then you worked for a company mm. so you didn't just go into the food trucking right. business right away how did this whole thing come about the company i worked for here was the japanese company in the publishment company then i've been having very very great time out there i don't zero complain about the back there but when I start my own business, probably I want to do the service not only Japanese, but uh, any other nationality customers. That's my the, the principal goals. Mm -hmm. then, then after that, I was thinking to do what should I do. Then somehow come up the food business the food is the one you don't really speak perfect English mm -hmm. because if food is good 
maybe good enough customer service, then customer make happy and keep the customer coming back. Mm-hmm. That's my, <laughs> uh, maybe that, that's the way <coughs> I thought. Right. Maybe I got, if I go to go to Google or Facebook, I have nothing to do. <laughs> But food, especially focus on the Japanese food. Yeah. That's the way other country people cannot do it.、Mm-hmm. Maybe I can use the advantage I am the Japanese.、Mm-hmm. So that's one,、uh, one of the reasons to choose the food business. Then f- what? The next question is that what is, why did I choose the food truck business? Exactly, right? right? <laughs> so you have the food, so I understand why you got into the food, food business. Food,、yes. So instead of opening up your own restaurant,、mm. you decided to buy a truck、yeah. and get、mm. into the food trucking business. So、mm. why did you go down that path? Probably financial reason, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> for sure. But the word I always in my mind is the one, the word, the, you know, the ray clock. Ray Clock is a person that the McDonald's franchising and spread to the all over the world.、Mm-hmm. His name is Ray Clock. And he s a y the be daring, be first, be different.、Uh-huh. So don't be afraid to be the first person doing the challenge, whatever. People don't do it.、Uh-huh. Right. <clears throat> After, and that makes me inspiring that if I open the Japanese restaurants. Right. A lot, tons of the Japanese restaurants are all over the world.、Mm-hmm. I mean,、uh, as for the, especially LA. Right, a lot of Japanese yeah, restaurants. Especially around here, South Korea. Yeah,、Bay. so many, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. And what's the reason I started the Japanese restaurant after that? There's a lot of peop- good restaurants already, and a lot of good chefs、mm-hmm. have a career in Japan. If I start following them, there's no reason to win.、Mm-hmm. So, the, but, Think of the food truck. How many trucks in a Japanese food truck in the LA? Probably at that time I was like 3,000 food trucks. Right. And Japanese food truck at that, at that time maybe one or two. That's it?、Yeah. Wow. Even now, for now, I would say like、uh, five food trucks. That is、yeah. it? Really? Owned by Japanese.、Uh-huh. A lot of the Japanese, they say Japanese trucks, Japanese food, but owned by another country people, right? Right, right.、Uh, I don't say something bad about it, but Japanese owned Japanese food truck, is, I would say like a five. five. Yeah.、Mm. So, like the authentic Japanese、mm. food trucks、right. are only about five out of、yes. more、yeah. than 3,000 now, though, right? I'm assuming. They're expanding, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely expanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, maybe the chance to survive.、Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>、right? uh, there's, there's less competitors.、Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. And focus on as a, what you can do, what、right. I can do as a Japanese. Because that's why、uh-huh. I, the, I pick up the curry, Japanese. I would say for the American people, curry is an Indian curry, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> At that time, Japanese, I thought the, Jap- the curry is a very. Authentic Japanese food. Yeah. And actually, I want to stop you there for a quick second because I do have a question about、yes. that. So, there are a lot of Japanese food you could have c h o s e from, right?、Mm. And I guess like, when, American, when you ask Amer- an American person, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Japanese food? I'm assuming the first thing that most people will say is sushi,、mm, right?、Um, but of the many things, Japanese foods that we have in Japan,、mm. why did you decide to go with Japanese curry? curry? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The main reason, one, <laughs> is I don't have skill to make sushi. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not a sushi chef. I'm not a sushi chef.、Uh-huh. Probably I go to, the, to do the sushi. Maybe I had to learn the, at the back then. Go to the sushi academy or whatever, yeah. And how to cut the you know the, the fishes,、mm-hmm. but the my the was one reason is I, I don't have skill to the making sushi, right? Then also, think about the food truck business that is it's not easy to keep the real stuff fresh because、mm. when I'm driving freeway. Couple hours in summertime, yes,、like、90 degree, 100 degree. We have to keep 
the the rare fish fresh mm -hmm. is not easy, mm -hmm. right? And it t it means a little bit cost and uh, risk. But think of the Japanese curry. Uh, if one is easy operation, because operation is steam up the rice and dump the curry on the top, <laughs> and that's it. That's it. Yeah. Easy operation means less workers. Uh -huh. Less workers means less cost. Right. And easier to running the business. Uh -huh. right? And se reason the reason two is the the less food loss because Japanese curry after the daily work you don't have to throw away the rest of it. Mm. You can use the, the curry next day. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes even next day tastes better. Than, exactly. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Mm -hmm. So its curry business is very. Uh, I don't say easy, but uh -huh. the good to make a profit. Yeah. yeah. Well, it seems like you thought everything through, that everything was very calculated mm -hmm. when you decided to go with curry. Right. Because now when you explain this to me, it makes sense, right? right. It seems like curry is the right dish yeah. for a food trucking business. And, yeah. And food cost is pretty good. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> when you do the, the sushi truck, yeah. maybe food uh, the food cost is a lot. Yeah. And on top of that, like you mentioned, Japanese curry mm -hmm. is very different from, let's say, Indian curry, right? right? When you live here in the United States, or at least here like in Los Angeles, I guess now in Los Angeles, we have a lot of different types of food, so you get exposed to a lot of different types of curries. But when you think of curry here in the United States, mm -hmm. I think most people think of Indian, Indian curry, yeah, Indian right? Curry. And many people, if you've never been to Japan or never been to a Japanese restaurant, you don't really know <laughs> yeah. what Japanese curry mm. is, right? right. <clears throat> but when you, when you grow up in Japan, Japanese curry is something you eat growing up as a kid, right? It's mm -hmm. like a, you, it's like your, what is it? Um, something that it, it feels very home yeah, to you, mama right? Food. The mama food, right? <laughs> exactly. And all kids love curry. Yes. I love to eat curry. That there's something about Japanese curry that, that I think is closely related to mm. Japanese people. And I think it's very awesome that you're able to bring that right. to the food trucking business mm -hmm. and show, you know, uh, American people that this is Japanese curry. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. And so, I think I have only uh, a lot of the. Indian custom too. Really? Repeated uh -huh. customers. Uh -huh. Even go to the, I go to the event, yeah. the big event, the a lot of the food trucks come together. And my truck, Japanese curry, and right next to me the Indian curry. And sometimes the Indian custom come to me. <laughs> <laughs> what what do they say about Japanese curry, your curry? The, surprisingly they say not really different. Oh it's not really yes. different. Oh yes. interesting. The yeah. way maybe mix the, the spicy the way Japanese curry and the Indian curry is maybe the difference, but most likely the Indian curry loves both. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very interesting. But maybe for them, it's more choice. <laughs> <laughs> more more yeah. variety, huh, yeah. in their curries. Wow. So, um, very cool, man. Um, customer service. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we talked about customer service that you have... Uh, experienced in Japan growing up mm. and the customer service that you have uh, become accustomed to here in the United States in the last 20 years. Mm. So when people come to your food truck, mm. what kind of customer service does your food truck offer? Does your business offer? Is mm. it the Japanese style? Is it the American style? Is it a little bit of both? Yeah, oh, that's pretty much a good question. That Because the, no matter what the type of business, the business means my policy business is entertainment mm -hmm. how much make a customer happy or how, how much customer entertain so the way I won't say I the way I do is Japanese style or American style I don't know that but I'm focused on is each customers come to my visit my truck make happy mm -hmm. and one of the way do I do is making the stamp card mm -hmm. And each time customer bring the card, the, I marked the stop card and collecting 10, 10 mark, I give you the one free tacos. Right. And same time, I write it down in the card. I write it down the American customer's name in Japanese. Uh -huh. For example, 
uh, I ask a customer, what's your name? And he say, Jun. Uh -huh. Okay, write it down in Jun in Hiragana. Uh -huh. And showing them to the, hey, let's uh, take a look. This is uh, your name in Japanese. Uh -huh. That's the one uh -huh. that the American really customer cool. never seen their name in another country. Right? Yeah, and yeah. They're holding the, the stamp card in their wallet. Uh -huh. And that makes, remind, keep remind my truck name in the wallet, right? Yeah. And make helps to repeat, make the customer come repeat it. Yeah. Mm. And also the the free tacos. Uh-huh. One, the, fill out the one the stamp card making one taco free. And our next one, second fill out two tacos free. Yeah. Is more and more. Yeah. <laughs> and before like 26 stamp cards, customer came to uh -huh. here and they, they order 26 free tacos. <laughs> Almost I was a bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> you saved up the stamp yeah. cards. Yeah. Huh? When yeah, I started yeah. in the stamp card business, uh, I never expected that. Somebody to bring somebody. 26 <laughs> of <laughs> them. <laughs> in one day, yeah. you're like, the food truck is done it's because all you're, you're all free. <laughs> so for people that might be a little bit confused, um, they're like, hold on. I thought Seosan does curry. Mm -hmm. Why is he giving out tacos? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> When I start in business, only I do the, the curry on rice, uh -huh. curry rice, right? right. <clears throat> but uh, keep doing the, my business, I found out now everyone eat rice. Right. Mm -hmm. Some people eat, eat uh, another stuff. So since this is uh, Southern California, more Hispanic people or they are familiar with the Mexican food. Mm -hmm. So I'm mixing up like a curry, burrito, curry, quesadilla. Quesadilla yeah. is one of the customer's favorite for now. Oh man, I had it. It was <laughs> so good. It was yeah. delicious. Yeah, so mixing up. Japas Japaskan people say that. Uh -huh. Japaskan. Uh -huh. yeah, Japaskan. Japaskan, Japanese, Mexican. Uh -huh. Mixing up. <clears throat> Japaskan food, sometimes people call me. So the, I'm keep adjusting what customer like it. Right. Yeah. So maybe the June came to my the truck. Uh -huh. uh, might be surprising that it's not like a traditional Japanese style. Yeah. And that's <clears throat> what makes your food truck really cool is that it's a fusion between the traditional Japanese curry with what American people mm -hmm. like, right? right? And you are catering towards the people here. Obviously, I went to your food truck. I had the quesadilla with the mm -hmm. curry in it. First time ever in my life to have a quesadilla with curry inside right. of it. Crazy. But I'm not going to lie. It, it was crazy. I was like, hold on. Is this any good? But it was delicious, oh, you know. You. And have like being able to be creative and kind of going back to what you were saying, right? Be daring. Be the first. Mm -hmm. And what was the last one? Be daring. Be, first, be different. Be different, right? Yeah. So it seems like a, with your food trucking business, you follow this philosophy mm -hmm. because... You are very daring putting curry in a quesadilla <laughs> and you might be the first person uh, to put curry in a yeah. quesadilla. But because you are the first person to do it, I think it naturally attracts a lot of interest from mm -hmm. other people. And now it's a big success, right? People like, love it. Uh, still, still on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Trying but, to get there, yeah, right? It's yeah. surprising that they have a choice as an option. Uh -huh. uh, one, once customer order the curry, you can give the option to the customer that as a topping. Uh -huh. You can choose the cheese topping, or, uh, garlic, guacamole, rice cracker, furikake, whatever they want. Uh -huh. yeah, a lot of surprise, make me surprised is uh, a lot of people order furikake on top of the curry. That's oh, wow. Japanese, never imagine, right? Never, yeah, never. That's make yeah. me interesting too. Yeah. Oh, that way, this is the way to American people like it. Yeah. Yeah. If I do the business in Japan, uh -huh. Never have the customer that <laughs> it on the top. Yeah, <laughs> that's very fun. Yeah, and, you know, make Just, me make me you know excited to be keep doing the business here. Exactly, yeah, see the difference. Because mm -hmm. what you thought as normal once you come over here is not normal anymore, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Furikake <laughs> on curry, of course, is really good in the, for Americans, <laughs> but for Japanese people, that's like, ooh, that's yeah. disgusting, right? Yeah. If people yeah. like it. People like it. That's good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I also think uh, you mentioned, you know, you write their name in Japanese mm. on the card. I think that is really cool. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Because American people, I don't know what it is, but they love Chinese 
kanjis or like、mm. not just Chinese characteristic, but you know, Japanese hiragana or kanji in general, they love it,、yes. right? And when you write it down for them, it becomes very personal.、Mm. That card is not just a card anymore,、mm. but a card that a Japanese person wrote、right. for them in Japanese.、Mm. Super cool, I think.、Oh, yeah. The first time I was writing the Chinese character and、uh-huh. name it, but it takes a long time. <laughs> <laughs> And、mm-hmm. I have to transfer Jun's name、oh, to the. Oh, right. You have to think of the think kanji. Of it,、right? Yeah. And the people making line, a lot of people waiting and making line. Yeah. And thinking of to Jun translated to the Chinese character. <laughs> <laughs> It's too much hard, hard time. So I changed to the hiragana. Yeah, that, that, that's a good idea, though. Because <clears throat> then, then you have to explain what the kanji means and like, what everything means to each、mm-hmm. customer takes too long.、Right. So, yeah. Hopefully, none of your customers took that and put like a tattoo, tattoo on their、man. arm. <laughs> It happens a lot, right? <laughs>、um, so, um, you know, aside、uh, you know, from work, what's something that you try to continue to do every day? Is there anything that you just kind of do on a daily basis, whether it's like working out or whether it's, I don't know, reading, or is there things that you do outside of work, that, like a habit that you try to keep up? Uh, the going to gym、mm-hmm. is the one I have to do more often, so I couldn't say that daily work. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, I came back from Japan, I got fat. <laughs> I have to keep more often to go to the gym. Daily, daily work, maybe probably that one, making diary. Okay, you write yeah, in your be- journal yeah,、uh-huh. before going to the bed. So、yeah. maybe I, I'm going to write it down. The podcast,、uh-huh. today's podcast stuff. Yeah. To my diary tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and when you write in your diary, if you don't mind sharing, like, what, what do you write about? Do you just reflect、oh, on the day? Oh, very much the general stuff, what's happening in my business.、Uh-huh. Today I met somebody. Uh huh. <clears throat> But the good stuff to keep making diary is the. My diary is the one. How do you explain it? The same day and in the one page. You can take a look like a last year of today, what、uh-huh. I did. Oh, really? Two years ago. Today. Today,、uh-huh. what did I write?、Uh-huh. That's a list. But easily, easily, you can tell that three years ago, today, today is January.、Huh? Today is January 19th. 19th.、Mm-hmm. Three years ago, January 19th. Five years ago, January 19th. What I was thinking, that I can take a look very mm-hmm. easy. Mm-hmm. So that's what makes me you know,、uh, motivated to,、yeah. to write it down. Like,、uh, like five years ago, oh, I was a sales of only one ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And today, oh, today the sales were too bad. But think of it. Five years ago, I was only one ticket. Right.、So、comparing five years ago, you see yourself you see growing, growing, right? right? Yeah. Don't be, don't be nervous and don't be, no reason to be negative.、Uh-huh. I'm growing up. Uh huh. So keep motivating up. I like that. I like that a lot, you know? Yeah. Because I think the only way to see how much you are growing every day is to reflect. And、mm-hmm. in order to reflect, I think writing it down is one of the best、mm-hmm. ways to do、I、it because、so. human memory is unreliable.、Oh. <laughs> you always, it's easy、yeah. to forget. I don't even remember the what, last dinner I had. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. So being able to write things down and look back on it, even you know, one week,、uh, Seeing what you did one week ago, seeing what you did one year ago、mm-hmm. makes a big difference、yes. on how yeah. you.、Surprising. Right?、Yes. Yeah. So、um, I try to make it a habit to write in the diary too,、mm-hmm. maybe not as、uh, detailed as you do, but every morning I write things down and I always try to look at the diary and see how I did for that day.、Mm-hmm. Um, I do have to make it a habit to also at the end of the night write down how my day、mm-hmm. went as well.、Um, so we're kind of coming down to the end here.、Um, I want to talk about. Your future goals,、mm. right? So, you just ta- kind of mentioned, you know, five years ago you only sold one ticket, and here you are today、um, making progress. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? What are your goals 10 years from now?、Mm. Since my life is jet coaster, <laughs> roller coaster, <laughs> up and down, up and down, up and down. still、uh-huh. don't know t h e r Because, like, a Maybe probably the 10 years ago myself, I never expected 10 years later here now. But I, I'm pretty much sure 10 years later, still living in LA、mm-hmm. or United States, or maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows it.、Uh-huh. I would love to do, do my own business to keep in business.、Uh-huh. 
that's I'm not guaranteed that like this curry food truck business is going on, but probably I'm asking somebody to running my business, the food truck business. But still, I'm pretty much sure doing my own business right in the United States mm -hmm. and meeting the international customers, in, 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 including the American customers. French customer, Korean customer, Chinese customer, mm -hmm. no matter what nationality, making, trying to make them happy. Yeah. That's my the principle. Right. So, <clears throat> if I do in that kind of stuff, probably I don't really mind to what type of business I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. As long as you're serving the world. Yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe I do that with YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you should document your food trucking yeah. days, yeah, <laughs> your business. Um, so do you have any uh, final messages, advices to the podcast listeners? This is uh, the listener is Japanese in Japan. Most of them, Most yes. Of them. Uh -huh. Okay. So the, the, the reason why I got offered from June to do being the podcast is trying to tell them that even me like the I, I don't have a good background but still I could at least I could live in the United States for 20 years right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> doing the own business so there's so that there is no reason that you cannot do it mm -hmm. yeah don't be afraid and uh, don't be too nervous and doing the just uh, doing the Put in the first step, mm -hmm. whatever you like. Yeah, just dreaming whatever you like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, focus on what you want. That's my message. Well, thank you very much, right? And if it's something that you really want to do, then if you put your mind to it, it can become reality, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and it seems it. like talking to you, that's what it's all about, is once you set your mind on something, you've always been able to achieve it. Yeah, totally. And if you can do it, then why can't... <laughs> yeah, no then Why, why yeah. not anybody can do yeah. it, right? Yeah. yeah. When I was studying English, I didn't, I didn't even understand the homework. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where you started, and this is where you are today. Yeah. So, yes. Um, you know, Selsa and I, I just realized we've been talking for one hour and we have not mentioned the name of your food truck once oh. yet. So, uh, <laughs> okay. can you tell the podcast listeners uh, the name of your food truck at least yeah. so they know? It's called Luck Dish. Okay, Luck Dish. Yes. And uh, wh what does that mean? Well, wh why Luck Dish? Uh, to bring customer good, the good luck to my customers. Uh huh. Yeah, that's my goal to my business. And if uh, the listeners want to find more information about you or Luck Dish, mm -hmm. where, where can they go? Uh, check out our Facebook or uh -huh. our Twitter. Okay. Instagram. And is it just Luck Dish? Luck Dish LA. LA. Okay. Yeah. And that's on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All three of them is Luck Dish LA. LA. Uh, accidentally, the uh -huh. Facebook one is my personal name. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got you. But Instagram... Mostly, yeah. Most likely Instagram. Okay, got you. So if you guys want to find out more about Seosan's food trucking business called Luck Dish, go to Instagram or Twitter and look up Luck Dish LA. That's L-U-C-K-D-I-S-H-L-A. And you'll find uh, what he's up to, where his food truck is, and... Um, like I mentioned in the beginning, we actually made a YouTube video out of this entire thing. Uh, we did a conversation in English today, but if you're interested to see what his food truck looks like, what kind of food he serves, and me eating his quesadilla with curry in it, come to my YouTube channel and check it out because honestly, it was one of the coolest experiences and I've never had a curry quesadilla, but... I think uh, from now on, even at home, when I make curry now, I think oh, I'm going to start putting curry in my quesadilla. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Seosan, well, thank you very much for joining thank us you. today. It was a lot of fun. All right, me too. And um, you guys, make sure to swing by the YouTube channel and check out the video that me and Seosan did together. All right, Seosan, thank you very much. Thank you. If you want to check out Tomo's food truck business, swing by my YouTube channel. I visited his food truck and made a YouTube video out of it. You gotta check it out. His food truck is awesome. Just go to the Hapa A Kaiwa YouTube channel and you'll find it under the LA videos. Tomo-san's food truck を見たい方は私の YouTube チャンネルをチェックしてください。
実は私は彼のフードトラックへ直接行って YouTube 動画を作りました。彼のフードトラックはすごくかっこいいので、ぜひ動画をチェックしてください。ハパ英会話の YouTube チャンネルで見られます。You can find today's show notes on hapaeikaiwa.com slash podcast 273. The show notes include a summary of today's episode. 今日のエピソードの詳細とインタビューの要約は、ハパ英会話 .com スラッシュポッドキャスト273に掲載されているので、ぜひご覧ください。If you have any comments or feedbacks, feel free to leave a message on my blog. ご意見やご感想などありましたら、ハパ英会話のブログまでにぜひ投稿してください。ハパ英会話は、Facebook、Twitter、Insta、YouTube でほぼ毎日会話に役立つ英語のワンポイントレッスンをお届けしています。また毎朝午前6時に無料のメルマガを配信していますので、まだ登録されていない方はぜひご登録ください。Thanks for listening today. You guys have an awesome day and I will catch you again next week. Take it easy. Peace. <音楽>